Hi everyone, uh, hope everyone's doing well today and welcome to another episode of Motive to be Productive. I'm Dario, your host, and today we have the pleasure of hosting a very talented and creative artist, Farima Fuladi, who's currently living in the United States in, and creating her paintings in her studio in Houston. She completed her Master of Fine Arts from Penn State University. Her work includes commentary on images, themes, symbols, and stories from the Iranian visual culture and literature. She's also a full-time lecturer at Sam Houston State University, and also the co-founder of Crit Society, a critics platform, which we will talk about all of these furthermore in the interview. Farimo, thank you so much for giving us your time and uh, being our guest here today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daria. Thanks for the invitation. I'm so excited to be here. Hello, everyone. We as well. We as well. We really appreciate you accepting our invitation. So let's start with your um, work first, if you don't mind. So can you please share with us your painting style and uh, let's dive into that subject a bit and then we want to see uh, where you get your inspiration from your work. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, so I do mostly painting these days. I'm like working on like some experimental short videos as well, but I'm going to talk about my paintings because that's what I do mostly. Uh, I create mixed media uh, paintings, mostly with water-based media, like acrylic, ink, graphite. Um, I guess nowadays they call all this art that you see out there, most of it, they call it contemporary art. So the school of art, if you're looking for a school of art, they call it contemporary art. Uh, especially if the art is talking about uh, the era that the artist is living in, uh, and about the social and like political issues around it, um, the the event, the today's event. So, um, and this is about my art. Fantastic. So let me ask you, um, let me ask you, what is your source of inspiration from the work that you do? So, um. Just to let our audience know, um, we will uh, share some of uh, Farima's uh, artwork with her permission within sure. our, in our next Instagram posts. So just for everyone to get a better picture. And can you please uh, share with us um, the source and the source of inspiration from what you do? Because I, I, I learned that you use specific symbols more often than others, right? If, if I, if uh, it depends. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I get my inspiration mostly from my own life. And I try to kind of elaborate that through like a broader uh, concept of human being life. I, look at myself as a sample, like a small sample. <laughs> uh, so my uh, inspiration source mostly is the, the life I'm living now and my memories and kind of the, how they interact on my canvas. And, um, and I really appreciate that you brought the, um, this up because going into our next question, you've had and you have a very interesting uh, life experience in terms of the different places you've lived. And it was, it was very fascinating for me that with all the different countries and different cultures that you've lived in, can you please share with us some of the places that you've lived in and how those places have influenced your art? Uh, sure. Um, so mostly I live, I still mostly lived most of my life in Iran, in Tehran. Uh, I had a 
uh, I was lucky to be able to live one year in Kerman, which was a fantastic year. Um, but after, like before, uh, before that, when I was very young, I traveled to Brazil, uh, and that followed uh, with uh, from Brazil. I stayed there for around six to eight months, and then I followed. I went to London, and I lived there for around a year. Uh, I went back to Iran, and during this time, mostly I was either studying languages or doing photography. I wasn't doing any painting at the time. Um, and the other journey that I took that kind of influenced my art was that I decided, I was looking like, I have this urge in my life, every few years I need a change. <laughs> so I was looking was the time for a change. I, I, decided to go to Turkey to Istanbul and live there just for one month. It was short, but still very enriching and rewarding experience. And that, um, I rented a house there. It was a, um, in a Kurdish neighborhood. So it was a very interesting, like I didn't want to go there as a tourist. Uh, exactly, that's, well, that's my point. So you experience things from a very unique perspective, not just a regular tourists that everyone goes yes, and visits yes. these places. Anywhere, anywhere I went, I avoided to be a tourist as long as much as I could. Sometimes you can't. You're like, if you don't know people, it's hard, but still I was trying. Uh, and that's one month in Turkey in Istanbul specifically uh, led to that, like I got to know a few artists. Then I got invited to a residency back in Turkey when I went back to Tehran, I got invited to a residency, so I went back to a Torba, a very small uh, a city, not the city, maybe a village. It was close to Bodrum, and it was beautiful by the sea. Uh, I stayed there for a month uh, in a residency with four other, four or five, four other artists, one from Portugal, one from New York, one from Lebanon, and one from Turkey. Um, was that was that a different trip? It was a different trip. Yes, the the one month staying me in Istanbul led to that I got invited to that residency. Uh, so I guess that was very influential in my practice as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so so you were talking about uh, Bodrum. I guess it was Torba, a very small village close to Bodrum that uh, I stayed there with a few more artists around the world. Uh, and I guess that was very influential to my practice uh, and my connections to art world. Uh, wasn't it difficult? Wasn't it difficult that type of experience in terms of living with strangers in a, in a, foreign country right uh, no it wasn't <laughs> so, i mean i i can imagine that like if i think about it oh living with strangers in a foreign country that should be difficult but even i guess i guess i'm i'm lucky in the art world people usually don't stay strangers them that, that long and usually they are very open uh so it's easier for me, at least, it's very easy to be around artists. Um, and probably I was lucky too, probably because the group was just like, had such a great dynamic and everyone was so kind and generous and like in collaboration and everything. Um, we each had our own room, but we were sharing, uh, five of us, we were sharing two apartments, which was very nice. This is very, it's fascinating. I mean, yeah, it's fascinating. It's you're very adventurous and it's fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. So, go, so going to my uh, next question. So uh, I learned that you've had uh, exhibitions all over the world, including New York, Paris, Iran, Turkey. And some of them, you were uh, physically present there and some of them you weren't. Is that correct? Yes. So I, my question is, from an, from an artist's perspective, can you share with us how, how, what, so 
how important, or let me rephrase it, what difference does it make for the representation of an artist's work when the artist is not there, or how important it is? Oh. I, I think it's really important from, from the artist's point of view, I would say the exhibitions that I wasn't, I couldn't be present in them. Mostly they, they are, I even forget about them. Mostly they are a line in my resume. I don't have any memory, like, you know, any picture in my head. So they really don't stay live in your uh, uh, memory. So I would say from that point of view, it's very important because I have like, if you ask me where did you had show, I would forgot, forget about those, probably. Right, <laughs> right, thank look you. At the resume. Oh yeah, I send my work to like, it went to Palais de Paris another year, or I send and print, went to Australia somewhere. I have no idea, like, you know, I have no connection. What, what was there? What kind of a gallery? What kind of a city? So I guess that's very important from my point of view, being the artist. And I also, I think it's important for the work because whenever the artist is with the work, most of the time, at least, I think the artists add to the work because people like to put a face on the, like this like piece of work. They like to see the creator. They like to talk. Um, but yeah, I guess it's important too. So, so to be physical. If, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, the conversation between the artists and the visitors of that specific exhibition is very, I think, essential and dynamic and the connection needs to be made, which makes the environment more lively, correct? If, if i'm if i'm getting this correct yes yes it does and it's yes yes i i agree uh, because it's not just yes yes it, i don't it's not only that they the viewer might question but they always bring something to the work they might tell you something that you never thought of but that can be inspiration or you can start th start thinking about that and that can be inspiration for next work, or it can be something that really exists in your work, but you are not aware of it, but they bring it in. So it's just like a communication around. Oh, hi, we, we lost connection for a few seconds. So going to um, my, the, my next question, uh, Fan, we are living in a very different world in terms of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in different profes professions have struggled or faced challenges. So I was wondering if you as an artist have faced challenges in this COVID period or has it influenced your work? Yeah, of course. Of course it did. Uh, definitely slowed me down in creating my painting. And uh, I had shows, uh, the most important one that I was excited for was supposed to be January 2021 at Smack Mellon in Brooklyn, New York, that got postponed to next year. Uh, I've, I've had shows that cancel, but luckily this one just postponed. Um, I guess I was one of the lucky ones, it stops there for me, but I had friends who lost studio because they couldn't ma maintain their practice. so the financial situations uh, but also the bright side of uh, virtually connecting to everything was that um, me as an artist i could attend to most of the artist talk that was happening around the world because before the pandemic these artist talk were local things like uh, artists would go to penn state they had like at 4 p.m. at this auditorium and that was for Penn State people. It was just like a specific. Now I'm, I'm sitting in Houston. I attended so many artist talks that I'm like grateful for that in New York, in Penn State, in like Belgium. Like just that connection also was maybe the bright side 
of the pandemic for artists. It's very, very fascinating to look to the bright, look at the bright side as well. Thank you for sharing that. So let's let's jump into the um, academics and well. You've, uh, you, uh, as, as I uh, mentioned in the uh, introduction, uh, you uh, received your uh, Master of Fine Arts from Penn State, and you were, a you were a visiting lecturer over there. Now you're a full-time lecturer in Houston. My question is, can you share with us from both, it could be from both the student's perspective and the professor's pr perspective, what characteristics should an art student have, or what are and what are the challenges they might potentially face that you can you can say here, and well, they can be more ready for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, overall, stereotype about art is that it's something easy. It's like accessories to everything else. Uh, but the truth is, the art education can be expensive if you don't, if you can't, uh, like, secure funding through your school. Uh, and most of times, not always, but most of times, you need that graduate school to make connections or at least to get your BFA to create that connection and formality in the art board. Uh, and it's hard to make money with art. So it's just like, it's not like medical school that's expensive, but at least you, you know that you gain after that. You gain. <laughs> you your loans. But it's, in art, it's so like the market, small, and uh, it's hard to make a living if you want to be just like artists in art practice and like not teach or, um, I guess the people, the, if you want to be an artist, you should be persistent and you should know what you're doing and you should be ready for the challenges uh, because it takes a lot of work like many years of work to get to the core of it to be confident and uh, be able to have something to offer the like this competitive world uh, i guess for me it was like i i couldn't see myself being anything else it was just like not an option. Uh, and I believe for most artists I, are like that. Sometimes I hear from my, like, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking maybe I go like get a studio and be a painter. I don't think you can be a painter like that. It's not like, you know, maybe so, so, I go so. get a studio and be a painter. You should really, yeah. <laughs> so it's, so, it's, the, it's uh, the drive. It's the drive, right? The drive and the you passion. You have that drive, yes. Unless it's hard, it's it's really hard to persist in the art world. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. So just going um into the last section of our uh, interview, you you have co-founded a critics platform called Create. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Can you please? as much as possible can you please share with us what was the inspiration for creating this platform what do you do in this platform sure um yes we started crit society with my friend uh, kiana hunarmanj she's an artist in bay area graduated from penn state we received our mfa from penn state and uh we were kind of close when we were at penn state and the same year I came to Texas, she went to San Francisco, she moved to California, to Bay Area. Uh, so we were like ha having a long conversation about how we are missing our community, the community that we built at Penn State and uh, all the conversations because at Penn State my studio was on the painting floor, uh, like I would see people, have talked to them, I would go to other studios, like I would teach, studio visit, like it was, it was a rich everyday experience. So you were talking about the inspiration for your uh, critics platform? Yes, yes, I was saying that um, we both, me and my friend Kiana, we both 
lost that community that we created throughout like five, six years at Penn State. And we were thinking about, we were just brainstorming, what should we do? And then we came up with this idea to create a platform where we can go visit artists virtually around the globe. Um, we are doing it mostly in the US, but um, like it has a potential to visit artists around the globe and just create that community for ourselves. And it was before the pandemic, we were not like thinking about the pandemic. It was before all these Zoom calls that we started Zooming in November and then the pandemic hit the US. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, in November, it was our anniversary. <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. Interesting to know that. So you started before the pandemic. Yes, yes. Well, well, thank you so much for um, telling us about that. It's very fascinating. And on behalf of myself, my co-host, and our audience, I would like to thank you for taking time out of your day and agreeing to be our guest. We learned so much from you, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining our show. Uh, thank Fahima. you so much for having me. I had so much thank, fun. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, dear audience, uh, we reached the end of another episode. Thank you for staying with us and see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram page, and share this video with your friends. Also, if you have extra time, please check out our other videos. Thank you and see you next time.